Introduction to dimensional analysis last Friday, but we're going to go over that and we're going to start adding to this. There are things that you're going to have to memorize and there are things that you're going to have to learn to think. Yeah, it feels kind of warm in here, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I can't fix that. This room is, it's either too cold or seriously too hot. So you can choose your poison. I got little lines on the, the board here and here. I'm trying to write everything between those so I can record. Um, I will take this video. I was going to push it out directly to YouTube, but um, I'll do it after the class because Carson Newman's unreliability on Wi-Fi. Um, but I'll, I'll be able to make sure that all gets uploaded today. So that if, if you miss a class, I'm going to try and have each lecture recorded. If we're doing an activity in the class, that won't be recorded. Um, I actually have two students in here who are online only, and so this is how they're getting the lectures too. Okay, they're, they're adult students, non-traditional students that are in here. Um, okay, um, last week we talked about how to do dimensional analysis, but I want to talk now about more different types of conversions. So, most of the world is on the metric system or the SI system and we just need to go over a little bit of that as we're going on. Um, most of the conversions that you will be doing will be converting from English units to uh, metric units. So, but you don't have to memorize like nine different conversion units. There's only one conversion for every type of unit that you have in English to, and it doesn't really matter which one you memorize. You just have to memorize one, and then you can work to solve all the rest of them. So for instance, um, how many know the conversion of miles to kilometers? Just off the top of your head. Kilometers means a thousand meters. How would you know that? It's actually not just 0. 0.6, but you're close. One mile is 1.6 kilometers. 1.6. It's actually five eighths. Okay. Think about your car. It has on a speedometer, a speedometer. Um, you get to. Uh, that's how it's spelled, guys. That's where that comes from. I learned how to spell that word when I was, I think, in like third or fourth grade, and that's how I remember how it worked. Um, if you look at where 50 miles an hour is on your speedometer, 80 kilometers is immediately below it. So it goes 50 miles per hour and over 80 uh, kilometers per hour. Five eighths. That's a fraction that's not a nice fraction, so you, it works best. So the idea here is you can learn it this way. You can say, oh, I'll remember what kilometers to miles is. So now you have a long way to work it backwards if you're trying to go to inches, right? So this is convenient, and I like the little story that goes with it. That's not what I've memorized. I have the unit I keep up with is one inch is equal to, it's 2.54 centimeters. How big is a centimeter, guys? It's a, it's a hundredth of what? Centi means a hundred, like a cent, hundredth of a dollar, which comes from the old Spanish dollars, um, as opposed to, so it's a cent of one hundredth of a meter, so it takes two and a half hundredths to make an inch. If you commit that to memory, you can convert almost everything to it or from it. Okay, so we're going to take an example and you're going to use the dimensional analysis that we learned on Friday. I'm going to 
work it with you here. And I want you to convert the length of one football field, which is how long? American football field. 100 yards. 100 yards. To meters. So how do we set up the problem? We start with the answer, right? So we go, okay, we want 100, oh, we want one meter, 100 meters. I want to know what is not 100 meters. One, what are the meters? We need something with meters in it. So something we have with meters in it, we know one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. What do we have that has centimeters in it? Are we bringing the centimeters up? We know that we have 2.54 centimeters to the inch. Now we take the inches. We go, okay, inches come up here. Well, we know that there are 12 inches in one foot. There are three feet in a yard, and we have 100 yards. That means everything cancels out except for meters. And that's what you're looking at. Nice convenient thing right here is this and this. Awesome. Cancel out. Now all you've got to do is multiply 2.54 times 12 times 3. And like I said, if you do this, you get all but one point on the test. Now, if you get the right answer, you get the additional point. You will have to do this. Memorize this. Let's do one more on link. It also helps to know five eighths. Remember, that's that's all equal to one, right? Fraction like that. So let's if I drive. 35 miles an hour for 10 minutes. the answer start with? Meters. That's the first thing you have to put up. Work from there. more than one way to do this. It's like five or six ways to do this.
How are we doing? What should be the first thing you do here? Anybody use this as an approach? You could have had five miles is equal to 8,000 meters, all right? That's what that literally means. Or you can convert feet or yards into inches. What you need to do is get a distance. So how did you go about solving it? Somebody tell me what they did. How many think they did it wrong? Okay, you won't have to answer them. The rest of you have to answer me. <laughs> Who thinks they got close? How far did they get down the road? How many miles? It went 35 miles an hour for 10 minutes. How do you figure that out? You need distance. No, well, you're close. So you go 35 miles over one hour, right? Times 60. <coughs> over 10 minutes. Ah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll get that one. So it's gonna be one hour over 60 minutes. Now you put in the 10 minutes. See, it lets you check yourself when you're doing it. So now you do that and you know exactly what your distance was in miles. Does that make sense? How many don't think this way? So if I, so you say it's gonna take me 10 minutes to get there, or if I say we gotta go 45 miles, do you think about how long it's gonna take? No, I'm always happy. So this is natural to me, but I've been, I worked in this discipline for many years. So, this cancels, this cancels, this cancels, and that cancels on your left with is miles. So it's 350 divided by 60 or 35 divided by six. Um, that's your answer. Everybody see where I get 35 divided by six? Okay. This is equal to 35 by six. Now I, and this is in miles. Now I have a distance. Now you, I can say, how far did we go in meters? Now you can convert that. Meters. What do we know is in meters? We know that there are, we can use 8,000 meters in five months. See where I got that? Who doesn't know where that came from? It's okay to say you don't know. That's why we're in class. Right here, five miles is equal to eight kilometers. Right, but a kilometer means a thousand meters. So now that means eight thousand meters are all equal. Yes, ma'am. Would it be okay if you like um, did that same thing, but rewritten out like five times and conversions like I did? Yes. A thousand meters over a kilometer, and then yes, you, that works. Too. There, like I said, there are like five, six, maybe ten different ways to solve this. That's why it makes grading these papers so hard. I gotta follow your logic in the process. Not necessarily the way I think about it. I do give you partial credit for getting through on these problems. So I give you a lot of a lot of grace on this. 
So once you go 8,000 over five miles, I now know that I have 35 over six miles. Miles cancel. Do the math. And I don't even care what the math is. I mean, just, that's the answer. Only way you get to these is to memorize and to practice this. I will have a practice homework for you on Wednesday to work. To work and then to turn in on Friday. So that's the distance. We can go fractions of centimeters, we can go fractions of an inch converted to centimeters, or we can go tens of thousands of miles converted to um, almost anything. Like you hear about this stuff all the time. What's a light year? Anybody know what a light year is? You've heard about it. Nearest star is how far away? How far light travels in a year? It is how far light travels in a year. It's a. It is not a speed. It's a distance. And it's it's actually the speed of light. Light travels at three times ten to the eighth meters per second. It's 186,000 miles per second, if I remember correctly. Um, it's a distance. It's, it's another way of measuring distances. We just make up ways to measure things. Okay, until we can measure how fast light was going, we couldn't tell you what a, what that big distance. The light year works so well because it measures big distances. And so we can reduce it to what our brain can think about. So how fast is the fastest man-made object related to that speed? Space shuttle travels at Mach 25, used to, when it flew. Um, and Mach 25 is the speed of sound, another way we measured, weird ways we measured distance. Um, and you would measure how far sound can travel per second. That's a Mach. So Mach 1 is the speed of sound, Mach 2 is twice the speed of sound, Mach 3 is three times. Fastest military missiles made, somewhere around Mach 7 right now. So we're not even a hundredth on this scale right now. We're a hundred times slower than what's involved in these speeds and distances. So that's a little scary. So the closest star is like 4.3 light years away, and I think it's Betelgeuse is the one that's that close. So um, just an odd fact. Okay, long distance. The problem is 4.3 years at the speed of light is still a long time to fly, even though you're going super fast. So. Um, it's a very great distance from us. Now, let's think about another type of conversion. And for my video, I need to stop using red pen, guys. Um, I need to go back and mostly use black. This. Okay, so let's talk about volumes.
What are the different types of volumes that we deal with? What now? Leaders and milliliters. Okay, this is one liter. This is one thousandth of a liter. Okay. If you go the other direction, you could have kiloliters. Deciliters are kind of used sometimes, but not usually. You're going to use liters and cubic meters. So one is kind of a distance when you think about this. You know, you got three sides, three distances, one meter, one meter, and one meter make a volume. So you cube it and we got one meter. But how many liters are in a How many liters are in a cubic meter? This is like quarts in a cubic yard. It's essentially what you're talking about. How would we figure that out? I'm gonna back off on you. What else do we measure? We'll come back to that problem. You'll be able to solve that by the end of class. What else do we use for volume? We use gallons. What else? Quartz. What else? Pints. I'm sorry? Pint. Pint, yeah, so now we're all dealing with the, those weird English units that go in a gallon, there are um, pints, cups, but above this you also have dry measures of volume. You have bushels, and pecks. Anybody know how to convert bushels and pecks? We don't use them anymore. Try not to use You can buy a bushel of something. People say, oh, that's a half bushel uh, basket of peaches. Okay, that's what I'm taking. I'll take your word for it. It's smaller than the bushel basket of peaches that I buy from South Carolina every year. Um, or a bushel of apples that my wife wants to can for I don't know what reason. Uh, she makes great things with it, but it's a lot of apples. A bushel of apples is a lot of apples um, if you're going to can them. So, and you, you got, um, there's quartz in here too. Two, 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 you get to here and it's four. So, it's kind of like every other English unit. He goes, what? We skipped something in there. So, there's two cups and a pint, two pints and a quart, four quarts in a gallon. Um, you do need to know those just to function in an American society. You need to know what these are. But you need to be able to convert liters into these. And there's a real simple conversion. And now, this is because we're dealing with volume, temperature is assumed to be on liquids at zero degrees C because there's an expansion coefficient. So you're dealing with everything at zero C. One milliliter is equal to one Mm -hmm. 
my note. It's not a cubic inch. There's one simple conversion. I want to make sure I give you the right one. cubic centimeter. Think about that. So that means I converted a volume that I kind of know what it is. It's actually 10 drops is what it is if, if you're in a laboratory. But in real life, you now convert this to a linear dimension, which means if I have this, knowing this, I can change this now. I can change this to inches. I can come up with a conversion on this because this is going to be 2.547 cubed inches. So now I can convert this into English units. And now I can get over into gallons and others. You can also do the simple conversion of 3.875 liters that is equal to one gallon. You need both of these. You need this and you need this. It's the only thing you need for conversions. If you're European, the, Amer the, the English units are crazy. You just, even we have to memorize them. And we, haven't been, we don't use them all the time. We use the big ones. We use gallons of quarts. Unless you're cooking and now you're back down to cups. Tablespoons. How many tablespoons are in a cup? Teaspoons? Anybody? How many teaspoons in a tablespoon? Great. Very good. Okay. Our measurement systems are ridiculous. They're arbitrary. Okay. Um, and so you just have to learn which ones are the critical ones to us. <coughs> One of my cameras just went out. Don't know why. All right. Um, volume, very simple. Memorize two of those. Length, memorize two of those. Now, let's go to the next thing. Luckily, volume and length are the biggest things that we learn besides weight. Weight's the next thing. So what do we use for weights, weight measurements? The Bible says that um, a dishonest weight is an anathema. There are only, it's only used seven times in Scripture that a dishonest weight is an anathema to God. It means it's the worst of the worst. Okay? So conversions have been around for a long time. They used to have these little stones that they would work to make sure they balance out all the others and uh, we'll talk about how they did money money was great um, and they had these little stones that were supposed to be certified and have a mark on them to show that they were true weights um, and these would be and then people inspectors would come around and check them pretty often so now let's talk about weights what are we using weights we use pounds. What else do we use? Use kilograms. What else? In industry, we use tons. That's a long ton and a short ton. Anybody know the difference? One is 2,000 pounds and the other is 22 thousand or 2200 pounds 2000 2200 10 percent difference 
and you have grams in here. We use grams in quite a bit. Okay. How, what's the trick for converting between these things? One kilogram is what? That means 1,000 grams is equal to 2.2 pounds. Right? So, how much does one pound weigh in grams? I might pull the calculator out. Because one pound is going to be equal to 1,000 grams divided by 2.2 pounds. Four hundred and fifty, fifty-two. actually. Did you round it? Oh, it's because this is rounded off right here. Okay, all right. It's generally 452, but she's saying one is because the way significant figures works here. So that's fine. 51 grams. Do I memorize this number? Why would I want to memorize that number? If I were doing that all the time and I had to write them out, and if I were working from the pound side, I might do that. Rarely. I just don't get in the habit of doing that. I learned this number. Where we get into trouble is when we go down to the small units, like we we'll go down to grams, starting to deal with weights down in that, and you have, you know, we deal with other weights too. You deal with ounces, right? True. Yeah. Heard of troy ounces? Anybody collect coins or gold or silver? Troy ounce. Specific weights that are known to everyone that uses them. It's like having carrots and diamonds. All right? What's a carrot in a diamond? Come on, everybody's either going to be buying a ring or getting a ring one day. <laughs> and you're going, I don't know. Why don't you know? Because the only thing you care about is how much it's going to cost you guys to put it over there. So you're gonna be buying some fraction of a carrot probably, unless you're really making some money. Um, I think the one I bought originally was an odd number. It was like 0.35 carrots. I got a discount because it's a weird number of carrots. They charge you more, this is a true story. They charge you more a premium for even numbers, quarters, halves, three quarter, full carrot. That's bragging rights. And anything in between you get a discount on. It's less than desirable. And I'm going, I don't care. It's bigger than the other one. And I actually got more carrot for less money and she never knew until I was much older and told her about it. So, <laughs> um, I, I looked at it as a deal. Now that I look back on it, yeah. I still think it was a deal. She got plenty uh, out of it. Um, mine was, yeah, I think it was about 0.35. If it had been a third of a carat, it would have been, it was a third of a carat was more expensive than the 0.35. So we use weights in weird ways. Everybody devises these systems, sometimes designed to confuse you like carrots. I eat carrots. I don't go around measuring weights with carrots. Why would it, why did they ever pick that? It's actually not English. It's not from our vegetable garden. Um, yeah, so we've settled on two systems 
and really the rest of the world is settled on one system and there's really only a couple places that still use the imperial system. And even where they're using the imperial system, they converted from courts in gallons to liters in gallons so that they have this metric gallon that's four, four liters that's about the same size as our U.S. gallon. So when you travel overseas, you have to know that. But most of your gasoline is priced on the per liter basis. I mean, we're complaining about cost of gas. I remember the last time I was in Europe, in Germany, it was running four, four something euros to the liter. It was during a shortage that was going on. So if I say it was four, let's just say it was four, four euros to the liter. Convert that to dollars per gallon for me. Very practical application here. Usually the yeast put on the back side. So uh, I want to know dollars per gallon. Got to be equal to So you look up what the conversion is from dollars to euros. Right now we're pretty darn close. It's almost one for one. Has been one for one bouncing up and down. So it's one over one euro. It's been as high as 138 dollars per euro. But it's been as low as 0.9 in the last, 0.98 in the last few weeks. So now we got euros down here. We're going to bring that euro in. Now we got to convert liters out of that. I don't get liters out into gallons. What's the conversion number? Liters to gallons? 3.875. There's your answer. How expensive is the gas? I was shocked when I saw the number. I have a number? It's going to be a big number compared to what you're used to seeing. We're used to seeing, we're worried when it hits $5 down, right? What'd you get? It's usually not quite this high. Depends on when I've gone. I've seen it. 1.2, but everybody measures petroleum by the liter in Europe. Does that work? All right, so I want you to look at the packaging that you're using at home for your, um, I don't know if you eat your breakfast cereal or whatever you're eating. Look on it, see what type of units are being used. A 
guarantee you you're going to see both English and metric. And look and see how they're converting back and forth. And as a operations manager, you are responsible for what goes on the label. Sales is going and marketing are going to come to you and ask you what are the vital statistics for our products that we're selling. And you have to provide those in the correct units. Otherwise, you're going to crash into Mars. Right? We get that reference now? Yeah, don't be that person. Um, and I'm very sure there's somebody at the cereal companies out there that are trying to cheat the world because you look it up and you open up the box and it's half full of air. But the weight is right. And it's the only thing they measure is weight. They're doing volume, they're in trouble. They're doing weight, they're okay. Because volume, they're, when they're shifting it around, they get crunched, they settle down a little bit. So they want to sell it to you in volume. They want to sell it to you in weight. Unless they, you were on the street corner and they were dipping out that way, they'd sell it to you in volume. Because they, they get more volume, they can charge you more for it. Look how much more you're getting than you get in the grocery store. All right, guys, I will see you on Wednesday.